mai spaghetti bolognese. Now, thank you for staying with us. When it comes to the energy performance of a building, the ultimate goal must be to create passive houses. Now, Wolf Passive Homes is an exciting new building technology that aims to do that. And Fiona McLaughlin is here to tell us all about it. But first, let's catch up with Eleanor Dunn, who has been living in one of the only Wolf Passive Homes. We'll be explaining what all this is about in a minute. Take a look at this. <laughs> The whole concept of the thing is that you retain as much energy in the house. We don't have radiators, we don't have fireplaces, and there is a constant temperature in the house all of the time. We have uh, treble glazed windows, we have solar panels, and we have a windmill that's just after going up, so that's going to provide electricity as well. So basically, it's a self-sufficient house. When we, we got around the whole idea of it, it just seemed like kind of a Lego house, because it was these big aeroboard sort of blocks that went up, you know? We were kind of a little bit afraid, we said, I just thought it was like the, the little house that the three little pigs built and it was going to blow down in the first storm but we were quite impressed with the whole system and the way they were constructed and even in the middle of winter how warm they were so as a result then we, we realized this seems to be the way to go because it's a passive house and it's a completely sealed house there's no leaks there's no drafts there's nothing like that coming into the house or there's no heat escaping from the house so you must have a ventilation system what it does is it takes air from outside it brings it into the house then that air is circulated through pipes into all of the bedrooms all have fresh air coming into them so there is air constantly on the move around the house and there's fresh air in the house all the time we have one set of solar panels that heat the water, and then we have another set of PV panels which are over on the, on the garage. We have noticed that at times, they're using electricity from the national grid, and the electricity that's being produced from the solar panels takes over, and that's what's coming into the house. So that, in time, in combination with the windmill that's come up, should be able to produce all the electricity that we'll need in the house. Yes, I do. Fiona, I don't care what kind of a house it is, I just want to live in it, it's gorgeous. <laughs> I have to say, and thanks to Sean and Eleanor who, who let us see the house during Newbridge Environment Week, it's a spectacular house, it's it really is. It's a beautiful, is. beautiful house. And, and really puts to rest any sort of ideas that people have about being limited in terms of design when they're, when they're building a passive home. It was beautiful, and as you can, can see, the vaulted ceiling. This is the first time, the Wolf Passive Homes, the first time I've ever heard of them, I'm sure it's the first time yeah. lots of people who are watching the programme this morning would have ever heard of anything like this. Tell us a little bit more about it. Well, it's the whole passive concept is the idea of having an airtight house, so you, you absolutely minimise the amount of heat that's lost mm. from your home. And if you have an airtight house, that means that you have to have you have to have clean air, so you need a ventilation system. So what's used is a heat recovery ventilation system that filters in clean air. Uh, fresh air uh, a number of times a day, typically between six and ten times a day. And then the stale air is extracted, but the heat from the stale air actually heats the fresh air coming into the house. Uh, so it's a whole so new concept. No, it's the ultimate low energy they've build. They've no radiators, they've no anything like that. This is how it's done. Nothing like that. This is how it's done. And you, you'll actually have seen on the, on the footage there the, the room that is required for the, for the pump and that type of thing. But uh, there's a number of issues that you have to look at in terms of passive homes. But it's a growing concept. In, uh, by 2011, all homes in Germany and, Aust and Austria have to be built like uh, this? passively. Really? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Is it expensive? Uh, it's not really, no, it's 120 to 150 per square foot, which is quite reasonable, really. And what and would a normal house be? What, what you're talking about, in or around that, in you could pay in time. or around that, yeah, you could pay a little bit less if you're, if you're directing the build yourself or whatever, but in or around that, and obviously there's huge savings to be made. You could be talking about heating a well, house heating savings for alone. 100 euro a year as opposed to 2,000 a year. So there's huge savings to be made, you know. But there is, there is a huge range of technologies and systems out there. I mean, obviously, Sean and Eleanor have a lot in there. They have the wind turbines. They have the photovolactic panels, which we're looking at there. They also have the, the solar panels, because you do need um, domestic hot water. Yeah. So you need some sort of a system for heating that water. You that's know? obviously all extra then on top of that to, all extra. To, to put them in. But yeah. then you're saying in the long term, you're saving the money. In the long term, what you're looking at is savings over, this is the long term, you're looking at savings over 20 to 25 years. So really this isn't, 
you know, if you look at the statistics that people move house every seven years, mm -hmm. it would be hard to get the return if you are, if you are at the initial that. stages of your of your Do house buying cycle. people move every seven years? Typically every seven really? years, yeah, and typically about three times in their, in lifetime. their life, lifetime, yeah. Wow, <laughs> yeah. okay. All right, let's have a look. We have a graphic here, the advantages of building a, a, a passive home like this. Um, no need to worry about rising energy prices. I mean, this is, this is a key issue. I mean, one of the reasons that people are looking at passive housing now more than ever before is because of the, the building energy regulations mm -hmm. now being introduced for second-hand properties uh, in January of next year. They already apply to, to new properties. But also the, the, the increase in oil prices in I the know, last the moment, year, yeah. it's, it's, it's yeah. doubled, you know. So, I mean, you're not going to be affected by that, by that or not, not vulnerable to that It Reduces uh, the impact of global warming, obviously. Self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. It increases the saleability of your home. Now, will because, it? Absolutely. Without because, a shadow I mean, of a doubt. Because like, not necessarily everybody would want to come in and live in a house like that. But give, give it another year or two. I guarantee you there will be a rush to this sort of technology of next year. When the building energy regulations come in and when you have to hand a buyer a rating on your house and how much it's going to cost right, a year. Yeah. And if they get a rating from you that says it's going to cost €2,000 to heat this house for the year and they get a rating from somebody else that says it's only going to cost 100, 100 yeah. you're competing then with, with, with something you can't mm -hmm. compete with. So it will definitely increase the I wouldn't have thought that home. Ireland's climate is desperately suited to it's it. It's very suited to it because it's not extreme. We don't have the extreme cold winters. So actually mm. the fact that it's not extreme makes it particularly suited to We don't get a lot this. of the sun for the solar panels. We, have, we have enough sun to, to produce um, about 40% of the hot water that's needed in the home. So after that then you can look at something like the biomass uh, boilers and heaters or the natural gas or whatever. But there's still huge the savings to be, they to have be made. Well. Yeah. And it helps allergy, allergy sufferers. Well, Obviously if the, the clean air is being filtered. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, in, actually, in um, Eleanor and Sean's case in Newbridge, their um, son suffered from allergies. And mm -hmm. they noticed straight away that this was a, a, a side effect of moving into the house. His allergies have stopped now. Now, if you are considering building one, large windows to the south, obviously, because of its south facing, yeah. it's getting the sun. Orientation of the house is hugely important. So it, it kind of goes against that whole area of planning where the house has to be facing the road. You know, really, we have to start thinking in a new way in terms of planning. and. One of the huge, one of, a major issue in terms of planning a passive house is that it's orientated, the large windows and the, the longest part but of this, the facade. But we could do this, you south. can say this to anybody building a house, if you're building, like certainly. literally if you want to save money, this is, put large windows to the south of your house. Certainly, and mm. I mean I have none to the north, but that would, that would be the ideal really, but I mean if you have windows to the north to have the, have smaller windows to the north. One roof half in the direction of the true south facing. And that's to maximise the solar, the passive solar gains. You know, mm -hmm. So if you have it facing in the direction of south, uh, you're likely to get more heat from it. Well, I, it, it makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. And does. I think we're going to be hearing more of this uh, Wolf Passive Houses. Now you've heard it here first. If it's the first time you've heard it, we'll be hearing a lot more. Fiona, there thank you, you very much. And I suppose all the information as well on privateseller.ie. Absolutely. Thank you very much for dropping in. Now, uh, lots more. The last hour of the show. Don't go away. We'll see you in a couple of minutes.